So we come to the second presentation, yeah. also from Slovakia by Sonia Nudlitschkova. Is this correctly? <laughs> okay. Uh, she's working on a very exciting project on one of the most threatened species in Europe, on um, Isofia Babyankoi. And yeah, the floor is yours. So thank you for your att attention. My name is Sonia Nuhličková and now I would like to tell you something about distribution and ecology of endemic bash cricket Isofia Bebenkoi and I would like to show you uh, preliminary results. So study species. Uh, it is Isofia Bebenkoi flightless species with low dispersal abilities. It is mostly crepuscular to nocturnal species and it is listed as critically endangered. Uh, as you can see, it is the endemic species. We now only one site from the Slovak Cars National Park. It is the site in the Slovakia in the Central Europe, and the geographic range is very small. Uh, however, we still need the, 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 to improve the current knowledge. Uh, there is a limited information about distribution, species ecology and biology, and information about population connectivity. So our study aims are to investigate the current distribution. We conducted the first systematic survey of all historical recent and expected sites. And then we would like to determine microhabitat requirements based on geobotanical data. And finally, we would like to provide the first information about genetic variation. Uh, regarding material and methods, here you can see uh, the investigation of the distribution. Uh, in the season 2021, altogether we conducted 21 transects. We walked through more than 300 kilometers uh, to provide detailed information about the distribution and uh, to cover uh, almost the walls with the area, almost uh, all plains in Slovak Cars National Park. Here you can see examples uh, in, uh, uh, during our investigation, we included uh, recent historical, but uh, also potential sites uh, to check the presence or occurrence of the target species. Uh, regarding determination of microhabitat requirements, we use two approaches. First, we, we, we have done vegetation survey uh, on uh, confirmed GPS locations of the target species. And secondly, uh, each GPS location of the bash cricket we intersected with normalized difference vegetation index. It is an index derived from remote sense land cover data, and uh, this index provides us the information about vegetation density. For instance, red color indicates bare soil, orange color sparse vegetation, yellow, green, blue colors dense vegetation. And finally, uh, we extracted DNA from hit femur, we made uh, PCR reactions, and finally we obtained uh, sequ uh, sequences from mitochondrial DNA genes. And here you can see the results. First, this is the situation or status until 2020. There are all historical data to this year, and you can see uh, this by indicating yellow dots. But now we expanded many historical sites and we found uh, some novel sites, especially on the, I tried, yes, on the western part of the study sites. There is completely new. And regarding habitat requirement, we found that the species occurs on the sites with rich vegetation. For instance, we found more than 200 species of vascular plants. And here we compare the number of mono and dicotyledonal plant species. Monocotyledonal species are, for instance, grasses. Dicotyledonal species are broadleaf flowering plants, and we find out that there are more broadleaf flowering plants. Similar pattern we obtain it when we look at the cover in uh, regarding these two uh, uh, plant groups. 
And here you can see pictures with the target species sitting on the Vincetoxicum hirundinaria, and uh, our results suggest that uh, these broadleaf plants provide shelter, microclimate, protection from predators. And in most cases, there, uh, there were uh, the higher plant species, and we also, uh, also our results suggest uh, that the ve vegetation architecture is very important for these relatively heavy insects, as you can see. What the ecological indicator values indicate that the species occurs mainly in medium light demanding species in semi-humid habitats. You can see uh, these two pictures regarding light conditions and moisture. And here we uh, comparing uh, comparing NDV, NDV, NDV I, uh, indexes. We didn't find any significant uh, difference between sites and our results indicates that the species prefers ecotonal habits on the border of sparse vegetation, shrubs and forest edges. You can see uh, as uh, this yellow color, yes, here is a forest. Here are very hot places, uh, for example, stones and here are the ecotonal habitats. Uh, here you can see examples of habitats with the confirmed presence of Isophia bebenkoi, for instance, broad leaf semi dry grasslands, species rich mesic meadows, sub xerophilo fringe communities, or fringe communities in the contact with xerophilo grasslands. And here, uh, our first genetic data indicated that we found 15 haplotypes. Uh, the greatest difference is between western part, green dots, and was the eastern part of the studio area, red dots. And here is the dominant haplotype indicated by brown dots. But however, here you can see also another haplotype suggesting uh, some level of isolation too, yeah, on a specific sites. And here, this dashed line indicated that we need more data, more sampling, because here on these plains we have a low sample size. And with this research, we will continue. My conclusions, we provide detailed information about species distribution. Uh, we uh, extent of uh, the occurrence, we doubled this value. Uh, but however, the species still falls into critically treatment category, these are preliminary results and the research will continue. Uh, regarding determination of microhabitat requirements, we confirmed strong link with decode herbs and uh, we find out that the species occurs mainly in ecotonal habitats. And here we found relatively high genetic variation with uh, our data suggests at least three uh, different lineages and we suggest that these fragmented populations with limited gene exchange. And here I would like to show you future research. We would like to, uh, we would like to identify more potential sites using NDVI model and vegetation data. We would like to study population sites using mark recapture methods and species mobility. Then we would like to study reproduction biology in ex situ conditions. And finally, we would like to do treat analysis on, in, on to create a conservation plan. So this is my Greece. Thank you for the project donor and Slovak Cars National Park and my team. And finally, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much also for keeping the time so well. <laughs> we have plenty of time for questions. Yes. Yeah, Dragan. Um, my question is, you still identify the species as a critically endangered, no matter the plenty of new data. Have you identified new threats or you stick to the already proposed ones? to the IUCN, and which ones are these threats? Uh, what I have to identify, new trends? Threats. Yes, uh, this, uh, I, I think these are uh, preliminary results. 
and the research will still continue, but maybe it would be different. I don't know till now. I'm not sure. Don't know? Maybe I can add something to this. Sure, there are identified already some threats for species because this is abandonment of the pastures in the Slovak karst uh, to it is the succession of the shrubs and the woods there a lot. And then, of course, uh, there is also another extreme, the intensification of uh, moving and this, I don't know to, how to tell this kind of the moving and li leaving there the grass. Uh, how do you, how do you can say it in English? Mulching, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is, this is what is not very suitable strategy for all of orthopteras, I think, or, or most of orthopteras, not generalists. Yeah. So I don't know if I answer you. I have treats. I, I, I don't understand correctly. Yes, yes. I, I think that there are many, many serious streets. For instance, uh, car driving is a big problem through pastures and grasslands. This is the first thing. Maybe two intensive pastures and a succession, I think. Forest, forest is very dangerous, especially for the red dots that I shown. There is very small enclave, enclave very small sites of the species uh, where the, it occurs, and it is very dangerous because the forest come to the rocks and is over. Yeah. <clears throat> Sonia, I'm a bit confused about the mm -hmm. meaning of the dominance of. Uh, Dicotyl tiles over monocotyls, I think yeah. I, I don't, don't know any area where monocotyls are dominating uh, dicotyls. This is just a normal pattern. We have about uh, six to one on a global scale. And if you uh, count uh, species numbers on the, on the se uh, separate area, you will always have a dominance of, of, of dicotyls. You could also say, okay, uh, less, less grasses around, but uh, this uh, doesn't come out from your data. So what is the meaning of uh, this? graph where you show that the dicotyls are always dominating the vegetation around mm -hmm. the findings. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I think these are only just preliminary results from the first se season. Of course, this is only positive controls. Uh, we, till now, we determined what plant species are on the places where the species occurs, positive. But however, the next season, now, we plan to do negative controls. We would like to compare also other places where the species not occur. So we get uh, maybe uh, the good uh, chance to analyze uh, this picture that we, we would like to hear. Yeah, this is just uh, initial data, just to show where the species is, which vegetation there is. It's very simply. There's one online question uh, from Ho and Ri. Um, it's uh, about the threats that were mentioned. Uh, do parasite flies also include the threats of the species? Do you know? Uh, once more, please. Do you? Parasite flies, whether these are threats to the species? Deutsch. The, the flies, which are parasiting, <laughs> fleeing? Are fleeing? No. No, no. I generally, well. No. <laughs> I think it's a mm -hmm. natural process, but uh, we never know what's really going on in the, in the world mm -hmm. of parasites. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I think we have to go on. Thank you very much again. Mm -hmm.